Welcome to the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing for Friday, August 11th. This is Gina McGuire. Over the next couple of days, we will continue to see scattered showers and wet thunderstorms over the eastern half of the Great Basin, up into southern Idaho and Wyoming. However, as we move through the weekend, we have better chances of mixed wet and dry thunderstorms in the central Idaho mountains. It looks like right now the most problematic day will be Saturday, as lightning coverage will increase over the west central mountains. Much drier air has pushed into Nevada, and this drying trend will continue and spread eastward as we move through the weekend and next week. We also may see some breezy winds later in the weekend into early next week across Nevada and Idaho, and a cold front dropping down from the north on Monday, which may bring cooler temperatures, gusty winds, and additional showers and thunderstorms. Over the last 24 hours, we've def definitely seen decrease in lightning overall, but still continues in some of the same areas of Utah into northern and eastern Nevada and up into Idaho. Most of these thunderstorms did produce light amounts of precipitation, but you can see the image on the left shows where some of these heavier thunderstorms did occur. Over the last 24 hours, we've seen light initial attack across the Great Basin with 12 new fires reported and one new large fire over southern Elko County in Nevada. Over the last week to four weeks, we've seen the precipitation concentrated over the southern half of the Great Basin associated with the monsoon moisture, and this precipitation has been above normal both over the last week over the southern half of the area and over the last month. However, still dry conditions continue across Idaho, especially parts of western Idaho into the central mountains. How this has affected our fuel conditions, we still have very critical fuels over especially Idaho with areas in the central mountains, ERCs above the 80th or 90th percentile. ERCs continue to decrease over the southern half of the Great Basin. However, as drier air moves in, as we move through the next week, we will likely see these ERCs start to rise. Right now, we're setting new records still for ERCs and 1,000-hour fuel moisture in the west central mountains of Idaho. 10-hour fuel moisture still remains very critical over the western half and into the northern portion of the Great Basin. And again, 10-hour fuel moisture will continue to decrease rapidly as we see drier weather resume. The satellite loop from this morning still shows moisture in place over the eastern half of the Great Basin, with a few isolated thunderstorms early this morning over southern Nevada into Utah. However, this larger scale trough off the west coast will move eastward and affect the Great Basin as we go into the weekend and next week, bringing cooler temperatures and gusty winds. For today, we will see general thunderstorms move north and east from where we saw them yesterday across the Great Basin as this trough off the west coast starts to move eastward, pushing much drier air into Nevada. We do not have any high risk for lightning today, and we will generally see those thunderstorms across Idaho, into Utah and Wyoming, and being on the wetter side. We'll also see some isolated wet thunderstorms over far southern Nevada and the Arizona Strip. Otherwise, relative humidity will be decreasing into the low teens across much of Nevada today. On Saturday, we'll see that moisture push a little bit further east. We'll also see lightning start to increase over mainly the central Idaho mountains, and we do have high risk for lightning in these areas where fuels are still very critical and where lightning coverage will increase in areas that we have not seen much lightning recently. Otherwise, drier conditions will prevail across Nevada. This area shows the area of thunderstorms on Saturday, again mainly across Idaho into Utah and Wyoming. However, parts of northeast Nevada may see some isolated thunderstorms as well, and these will be a mix of wet and dry. Otherwise, the rest of western and southern Nevada, relative humidity will be dropping into the single digits. By Sunday, this trough starts to swing east across the Pacific Northwest, and this will bring additional moisture and scattered showers and thunderstorms to parts of Idaho, and also keep areas further south on the drier side. We will see winds also increase, especially across Idaho on Sunday as that first trough moves in, and relative humidity will also be increasing with cooler temperatures. However, further south, we'll see single-digit relative humidity across Nevada, with a slight increase in winds over much of the state, especially over parts of southern Nevada into southwest Utah, although relative humidity in these areas will still be a little bit higher. The overall forecast amount of precipitation for the next three days is mainly focused in the eastern and northern side of the Great Basin, where that monsoon moisture is still in place with again very dry conditions as you move further west. As we move through next week we'll definitely see a pattern change across the Great Basin as these troughs of low pressure move in. On Monday a cold front will be pushed across the northern and western side of the Great Basin bringing the potential for some showers and thunderstorms but also cooler temperatures and breezy winds. We have not issued any high risk for Monday but we will be watching the lightning especially in parts of northern Nevada and Idaho. On Tuesday, drier conditions are expected, especially over the western half of the area, with somewhat cooling temperatures as that trough remains in place across the west. 
This pattern will continue into Wednesday and Thursday, with drying especially over the western and southern areas, and bringing an end, at least briefly, to the monsoon moisture that's been taking hold over the southern and eastern half of the basin. Again, this will continue into later next week, with mainly drier conditions and somewhat breezy winds. Over the next seven days, the precip map looks very similar to the three-day precipitation, since most of the precipitation will occur over the next few days. The 8 to 14 day outlook shows generally cooler temperatures moving in in the north with a return to warmer temperatures over the southern half of the Great Basin as we get late in August with again drier conditions across the area. That concludes our briefing for today. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us. Thank you for listening.